Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus. Got my fancy hat. We got Seabass with his fancy hat. So today, sorry, I'm kind of out of frame. He's at a on a lower chair. But today we were just going to do a live stream. I thought it'd be easier. Uh, today's Monday. It's one of our closed days, which I should have locked up the door before we started doing the live stream. But if somebody comes in, you'll hear the doorbell. I'll probably jump off screen and Seabass will keep doing what he's doing. But I've got a pair of my uh, trusty old Cayman boots that I got at our Western Stock Show out here a few years back when we were vendors out there. We were doing repairs. And a uh, gentleman commented asking, you know, if I can make a video on how to treat Cayman. It falls into the same category as alligator and crocodile skin, too. Uh, but, uh, you know, I found my cowboy hat the other day, and I'm like, well, it's time to shine these back up. It's been a little while, so we'll get it going. I'll let the phone ring, but uh, we're closed today. <laughs> we'll go ahead and start out with our good old saddle soap. I'm not a big fan of saddle soap usually on certain types of leathers just because a lot of saddle soaps actually have silicone in them, and so the residue is kind of left behind in them, so it's better to leave them laying around. I got to go grab my uh, Sprite bottle, make sure I got the right one, and Seabass is going to do the other boot. So find a larger brush where'd it go thought i had another one of these i guess not but i got the one brush and we'll just switch out so you want to spray just a little spritz in the saddle soap a little bit on the brush i got one of these large five star ones unfortunately five star has closed down a while ago so Finding uh, finding these large brushes like this is a little bit harder than it used to be. There's a bunch of the little ones all over, but the big ones are a little bit a uh, little bit harder. Hello, Emery. I can't see that far. Laptop's a little further away than I'd like. But grab just a little bit of saddle soap on your brush. Make sure there's some water on there. It is soap technically, so you can grab it like that and just start brushing the foam up. Make sure you get down into those well nice and good. Clean it up, clean it up. And I like to do a section at a time quickly and wipe it off. Again, we're trying to get rid of the silicones that are that may be present. We don't want it to absorb into the leather too much. It gives it kind of like this horrible haze. But we did the front area, just a little bit on the back. No. I need more water. Spritz on the brush. Never done a live stream before, right? <laughs> At least uh, not on on the YouTube channel. Done a couple in groups on Facebook, and they were fun. All right, wipe it off. Got our Angelus rag here. It's a pretty good one. I don't like the texture on my hands personally, just because it's kind of got this uh, fiber structure, and my hands are usually fairly dry. I'm used to the Colorado altitude and everything, and the dry climate, so my hands uh, don't like certain materials. But now I'm going to go ahead and clean up the shaft area. See, Bass, you're going to be doing the next boot, right? Mm -hmm. So you're paying attention to what I'm doing, just a little bit like that, just a tad bit. Get the fuzzies off of there, fuzzy. All right, let me wipe it off real quick. All right, so Seabass is going to go ahead and do the other boot. Now, just to kind of give you an idea, I started out with this uh, front area because it was the dirtiest. I made sure to try to get in there with the brush right where the welt is, kind of get out any kind of gunk. I wiped it off and everything before it starts to dry. And then I did the back area here around the heel base and getting inside there, or heel blocks, some may know it as. And then did the front of the shaft area and then the back of the shaft area. It allows you to do, if you do sections like that, it allows you to be able to wipe it off quickly enough so that there's no residue of the saddle soap left behind. But let Sebastian take over on this one. How you guys like his fedora? That was mine. He stole it. I gave it to him. Hey, you like mine? I think it's cool. I got to order me a few more of these. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, sea bass, you're gonna take over. So a little spritz in there. A little bit on the brush. Just a little bit, not too much. Let's see how much you got on the brush, perfect. Let's rub it good, get inside where the welt is. You gotta go fast. Some more water on here. Hang on. A few spots you kind of missed right there. Get inside the welts right here. Make sure you get up there around these areas and wipe it off. You go ahead and do what you need off your pack.
doing it good? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, get them really cleaned up. Make sure you get inside the welt nicely. Mm -hmm. And then you can move on to this guy. Oops, Sorry, everyone. Yeah, got, it's going to take me a little while up front for a little bit. My first turn is the same uh, one? No, just a rag. That guy right there. Okay. I'll go ahead and do the one that I did. Okay. What? What you said? Potato camera. <laughs> Sorry, this is on my laptop, so the camera's eh, could be better. Did you put the renovator on the one mm -hmm. that I did? Okay. So That's for so conditioning, we ended up using the Saphir Medal Dior renovator cream. In most cases, I recommend doing the Reptin, but uh, these, I will be honest, I neglected them for quite some time. They were just sitting on the shelf. So I really want to condition them quite a bit. Uh, with the Reptin cream, there's uh, there's lanolin and some other forms of ingredients that will condition Reptin very well. But uh, with the Modal Dior Renovator here from Saphir, it's got your mink oil and your lanolin, which uh, in particular, uh, caiman, alligator, and crocodile will be able to take on better, especially because there really isn't a pore structure in these. So definitely want to make sure to condition them up well. You know, this one's all done here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Both of them. Both? Both of them? He did both? Did he do both? I wonder. I wonder. Well, I already got some on there. Might as well just get it back onto the toes there at least. Toes. And right here where the bend is especially, Right there where your foot flexes. Definitely want to put a little little extra 
never hurts because caiman, alligator, and croc, they tend to dry out a bit. So you want to be sure to give them some, some love in those areas there nicely. Caiman? It's like crocodile, or more like alligator, I guess you can say. Did you use this brush? Buff them up? I haven't you haven't buffed them? them? All right. So just grab our horsehair brush like that. Just kind of buff it up a little bit. You don't really need to buff it too much. Just a little bit, unless the only products you're going to use are a basic cleaner and uh, conditioner. Then you got to buff it just a little extra then at that point. Bring out that shimmer and let those uh, these waxes in the renovator or the reptin cream melt and shine nicer. Now, with Cayman, I usually like to use the next step up is going to be the Saphir Medal Dior Pate Deluxe Wax. And, um, you know, that kind of brings out a lot more shine. Now, I never like applying any color uh creams or polishes to the shaft area and up just because a lot of times your pants are going over it and it just rubs off onto your clothes a little bit more i mean you may have some that rub off at the very bottom of the pant but uh, that's not too big of an issue it's just when the whole inside of the shaft area ends up having that issue but when applying it pay attention just uh just like that with your bare fingers just start rubbing on a single coat all around. Sebastian, you want to take over? Just all around, only on the caiman, okay? Up to that line, up around the heel, too. Okay.
It's one of those days. Uh, all right. Did you do the other one yet or just this one still? Both. Both? All right. Okay. So I like to apply a second coat to toe. Did you do that? You did? He's doing everything apparently. Did he do it? Anybody? Uh, just a little bit right there, close to the tip. Somewhere just at the very tip. Comment. Yeah. Vadim T. Hey. Vadim, is that you from Washington, good sir? Their first live stream. It's on a Monday. I don't expect uh, too many people to jump on. But uh, we'll leave the recording up. I'm sure a fair amount of people are going to watch it, especially since... They want to know more about uh, taking care of Cayman. Should have probably locked up the door. Phone's going off and everything on our closed day. and Did not expect that today. Even call. Yeah, I know. Everyone keeps calling my phone, too. All right. So yeah. give them just a few minutes to dry. Allow that turpentine to evaporate. Grab your horsehair brush and start buffing it over. Am I getting too close to you? No, fuzzies flying. Oh, fuzzies. All right. Okay. I'm going to buff up the other one. While Sebastian buffs up that one. Where I had a brown wax over there. It disappeared. Ah, there it goes. Just the Bordeaux. Oh. Why not? We'll go ahead and do the Bordeaux. So I've got the Beauty Cure version of the Pate Deluxe here in the Bordeaux color. It's got a little bit of a purplish tint to it, but why not? The uh, color, the dye pigment in these waxes is not very strong. So, you know, if you end up using the wrong color or something on a pair of shoes, it's not a big deal because it's not going to show that color. It's not going to change the color drastically. But we're going to do the same thing, just our bare fingers right there. And I'm going to go ahead and do the welt area. And on the welt area, you can do a little bit of a heftier coat because, again, that's uh, not the welt, the edging. But you can apply a heftier coat because that is a harder and denser leather. So definitely, um, definitely want to put a fair amount on there. It helps seal up the leather pore structure there. And gives it a nice little shine also. I think next time we'll just need to be a little more prepared for live stream. Turn off the phones and lock up the front. Live and learn, right? Right? Yeah, start doing the edging, man. Just uh, around the edges. Uh, don't forget to get the inside of the heel block just a little bit right there with some wax. You don't really have to go through with too much condition or anything. These ones, they're not too dirty on the inside of the block. I'm really sorry, everyone. We got bad lighting and it's got some kind of hue on the way everything's angled. So, try to figure out how to set up my camera so that that ends up recording instead of using the laptop. But i give it a shot while well, we got Seabass here. He's about to be doing a couple of other recordings here shortly that we'll post later on. I got a pair of uh, Trask men's shoes that he's actually hoping to restore the look of them. They've never really been worn, and uh, he's wanting to sell them on eBay. So if you have a size, let me find it. Size 10 and a half medium, a pair of Trask with a Vibram sole on there that have pretty much never been worn. Yeah, these things have never been worn. He's going to be cleaning up the uppers on these, going to do a video on it, and then I'm going to help him post it on eBay to try to make some money. He's wanted to get a bunch of the shoes from the shop here that I have. Some of them are mine. He's like, can I sell those? No, you can't sell my You're shoes. You're not selling your shoes. Mm -hmm. But... Give them a minute to dry, buff them up some more. All right, let the black go. Okay, 
put just a little more black or actually let's get a feel for it. Yeah, I think it's pretty good there. I don't want my Cayman to be too shiny. I mean, it's got a bit of a shine to it, right? Just a little bit. You can make it even shinier if you want, apply a little more wax to it, but I don't I don't like my shoes to be extremely shiny or boots. So, you know, and this is actually interesting. Sebastian is the second person who has ever shined my own footwear. The first person was Jason Dawnstar early or late last week. He shined a pair of my Allen Edmonds and I did a live stream on a Facebook group. Uh, Waxed and Dyed was the group. And uh, good old Sea Bass over here is the second person to ever shine my boots. So you're lucky. You got to touch my boots. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I gotta touch up a couple of stragglers here. If you ever have stragglers like this, clip them off, take a lighter to it, and that nylon thread will just kind of melt and shrink up. So you know, you don't need to do anything too fancy. You want to do that? Okay. He likes the lighter. Let's go grab one for him. Little nippers like that and lighter. Did you finish out the welt on these or the edging? Just a couple of spots there. All right, go take these boots to your side. Get them off my side. And you could use other products as well, something that may be more readily available to you, possibly. Um, there's the Bickmore line. This is Bic 1 leather cleaner here there's big four which is more of a conditioning agent and then there's like big five which is kind of like an all-in-one those are great uh, especially for the cost they're definitely uh, more cost effective than Saphir products but uh, for us if we're going to take care of something we're definitely going to use the best and Saphir is definitely the best and the best product you can get out there so you know that's uh that's just one of them. There's also Tarago. There's the old uh, Lincoln products. Uh, we're actually using for the saddle soap. We've got the Phoebings on here. Let's see. Is it possible to stretch a Cayman boo? I have one. Uh, yeah, we can definitely stretch out Cayman. Um, again, it's it's not one that will stretch out a lot. Usually when we get pairs of shoes or boots in here, we like to leave them on stretchers for seven-day periods. Uh, some materials will stretch quicker, some will take longer. So uh, Cayman, you know, it may take a couple of uh, couple of rounds of stretching it to... I had a gentleman actually a little while ago that had a pair of Western boots and he had what's called a fused ankle. So his ankle didn't bend up and down and so he couldn't get his foot in took a total of five weeks of leaving them on, a, on what's called an instep stretcher right here but after five weeks he was finally able to get them on his feet and it was so happy because um, he was going to be wearing them to i believe a wedding and so you know may take some time um but the way we stretch them is we do, we put them on the stretcher and we spray them down with uh, what's called shoe stretch it spray it's uh, alcohol based but it's got a few other ingredients that prevent the leather from drying out significantly because if you just use straight alcohol or 50 50 alcohol and water it'll dry out the caiman significantly so shoe stretch is definitely the better way to go and we just kind of leave it on there and it'll can stretch out get the welts uh, no you can leave the welts if you ever also have welt stitching so welt is the stitching right inside here where the sole is stitched if you see a loose thread ever, don't ever try to pull it. Just uh, if you need to, just because it's in the way a lot, clip it and uh, burning it won't work because some companies actually use cotton thread for the welt. Some use nylon, some use polymer, and some use combination as well. So don't burn it, definitely. It's, uh, it's just going to stink badly. But these top areas here where you got decorative stitching or holding up the vamp area, those 99% of the time are nylon or polymer which will melt with a lighter so you should have no issues whatsoever and um you know the one percent that are cotton usually are for welders and firefighters so i doubt your boots would even 
fall into that category if they're just your daily wear or out and about type. But anyways, got them all spiffed up. Look a little bit better. The waxes, you know, you could waterproof them afterwards, but it's not necessary if you're applying the wax, like the Pate Deluxes like this. The waxes are gonna repel the water quite a bit. Uh, Jesus, I can't read your name. Jesus, sir. I did answer the question. Is it possible to stretch Cayman boots? Yes, it is. It just may take time. You know, it's uh, it, it's one of those things. We put on the stretcher and leave it on for a seven-day period, and it should stretch out. But uh, if it needs some more, we'll leave it on for another seven-day period. But yes, you can definitely stretch out Cayman and alligator. It just uh, it just takes longer than your traditional full grain leather. Kind of like how I talk long, talk too much. All right, let's check these over. All right, looking good. All right. Well, thank you, Seabass. Now I got my cowboy hat and my boots ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and finish up live stream, I guess. And if anybody wants to leave another comment down below and have any other questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. We may end up uh, shooting a better video down the road uh, with uh, treating caiman, alligator, and crocodile just because the live stream didn't turn out as good as, uh, as, good as we'd hoped for. But it's the first one ever. And we're going with sea bass. So, all right. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. You got anything else to say? No, you're all good. Boots look good. Yeah. Okay. They're sea bass approved. All right. Thanks for watching again, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next time then. Let's see how to end this thing. Ah, I'm still learning. <laughs>